I've never introduced a veteran innovator and entrepreneur in the publishing and book distribution industry. Eric Kampman has taught book publishing courses at Harvard, Columbia, New York University, elsewhere. He knows what it means to rebuild his life and business, and we're going to talk about that. But I think, Eric, first, welcome from New York. Yeah, it's great to be here. Just outside New York City is home. Actually, it's amazing to be here because um, if you've been flying around the countries recently, um, when you go to the airport, you're usually on a three or four hour delay. Oh. Yesterday, I was only on a, an hour and a half delay, so I feel very privileged well, and good. lucky. Well, I'm sure you're <laughs> right on time for us. You're enjoying this program as you're watching. I love it. I took the Alpha course, and I uh, and then uh, was a facilitator in it for a while. Um, I'd already come to know the Bible um, way before that, but. Nikki Gumbel, who is the originator out of uh, uh, Holy Trinity Brompton in, in England. It's originator of Alpha. Alpha. It's an amazing course, and I really recommend it. I love the idea that they were taking the course and then taking it into an exercise environment. Um, mm. And then Wisdom Walks. Um, in a way, they were talking about my whole life because I always thought of the Bible as uh, uh, drudgery. Um, and then I learned discipline, and then every day now, since I read the Bible every day, uh, it delights me. It starts my day in an amazing way, and um, I just uh, thought that was an amazing little uh, section you had. I'm glad you've been encouraged. We're going to catch <clears throat> up to that place in your story, but let's talk about the rise first. Uh, I, I never thought of studying book publishing as a career. You know, Did you always aspire to be a publisher? Well, I uh, have a master's degree and part of a PhD in English, and uh, it's kind of, and I haunted bookstores. I wrote a master's thesis on Dickens, um, and I was uh, sort of, this is, goes back to the 60s, so I was sort of like, what am I going to do with my life? And I didn't want to be a banker, I didn't want to be a lawyer, I didn't want to be a doctor. And it sort of was a natural progression to go into publishing. I started as a sales rep for Viking and ended up as a head of sales seven years later at Simon & Schuster, and so it was a very quick progression for me. And then I took the uh, daring and risky leap off the uh, ship establishment into my own uh, entrepreneurial uh, environment, Camp Money Company, and I started building companies after that. Mm. Now, where did it go south? Uh, well, I knew about half of what I needed to know when I started my company, and so the good half was great. Uh, the bad half uh, undermined all the good things, and by 1989, I was facing corporate bankruptcy. Mm -hmm. um, and that's where I met Jesus Christ, was uh, during that episode in my life. I call it a fortunate fall because I became a man at that point. I was playing at being a man before then, but I became a man. I took responsibilities for what I had done, what I had caused uh, to happen, and I started rebuilding. Uh, you used the word rebuilding there. I started rebuilding my life at that point, and uh, I moved on. But uh, from that point on, from 1991 till today, I, I, I I'm was in scripture and then that led to my uh, various books and so on and so forth. You have one wife, four children. Were, were you dealing with a growing family when all this was happening? Or? Right in the middle of it. Oh boy, that <laughs> just adds so much pressure um, for a man. Tremendous, yeah. Your confessions are, are really potent. Uh, basically, I was a proud member of the newly minted class of highly educated, biblioliterate Americans. What little faith I retained, because you'd been confirmed and baptized in church, yep. you had some religious history. What little faith I retained, I freely traded for the far more popular narcissistic religion of self-reliance and self-indulgence. I don't know if this same kind of cultural environment exists up here in Canada that existed in New York. I went to an Ivy League school, and uh, all of these schools were started by strong Christians. Yeah. And over you kind of lost it somewhere along the way. Well, but. yeah, over time. It was over a lot of time that they moved away into a new secular religion. And that religion animates those schools to this very day, uh, whether it's Harvard, Columbia, Brown, Princeton, whatever. 
And so uh, religion uh, just is not there. And they've substituted that, all kinds of disciplines that will bring you wisdom, happiness, health, and, and certainly wealth. If you're going to go to an Ivy League school, uh, failure is not an option. Mm -hmm. You're always going to be successful. But in the middle of this is this huge hole, uh, which is our whole cultural Western uh, history, 2,000 years of truth. It's been sort of discarded uh, for a new truth that sort of began in the 19th century and, it, and, and has picked up speed ever since then. And now we've arrived at a time when that truth is becoming one huge falsehood. And we're seeing in the United States as, as this uh, country faces uh, kind of what I faced in 1989, not corporate bankruptcy, but... Um, Personal, spiritual Well, bankruptcy. but also uh, a country going bankrupt. Mm. Uh, that's a very real... Uh, possibility in the United States. What was, well, you call it the valley of the shadow of death. Where did God call you out of that bankruptcy? God is gracious. And he called me before I went into the bankruptcy. He prepared me. Um, I, uh, I was so desperate and uh, I was self-reliant. So, I would always turn to myself for the big answers, and the big answers just, I ran out of answers. And so one day I went, went into St. Bartholomew's uh, Church on, on Park Avenue, and I prayed. And had, to, had you done that before? Not about this. <laughs> I, I had tried all the answers, and they were all coming, uh, I was coming up totally empty, and I didn't have any answers, actually. It was, it was I was a sorrowful wreck. Uh, but two weeks later, I was sitting at my desk, and all of a sudden, I had this enormous need to go buy a Bible. And I had, I was a biblical illiterate, literally. And uh, so I go buy this Bible, and I, 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 I read from it yesterday. It's a beautiful uh, standard version of the Bible. Uh, but where do you start? And it was two years later after that that I started reading on an everyday basis. I read through uh, the New Testament during that time. But it was preparing me for a future. In other words, the bankruptcy itself is not a relevant story in that anybody can go into bankruptcy uh, and never come out the other end and start spending the rest of their life being um, regretting everything that they've done. Mm -hmm. But this was a motivator for me that uh, I had seen light when I was in darkness and I was going to, I was, I was set on a mission. I call this book Signposts because uh, I, I needed uh, markers on the trail, on the pathway, on the pilgrimage to where I was going. I didn't know, and I, to this day, I don't know exactly where this is taking me, but I am on a journey, and I know that there's a mission for me, and I'm right in the middle of it right now. You uh, <clears throat> open the book with, uh, it's almost the dedication page, but one of your favorite authors occupies it with this Lewis. quote. C.S. Lewis. The safest road to hell is the gradual one, the gentle slope, safe underfoot, without sudden turnings, without milestones, without signposts. We have a whole world in, in America that grew up without the Bible, without spiritual signposts. And that gradual descent into hell was the course of my life. When I was thinking I was going up the corporate ladder, I was actually on a slow spiritual descent. So you needed a spiritual wake-up call. I got one. Oh. And the wonderful thing, your story just illustrates it again, is that when we come to the end of ourselves, God has us right where He wants us. There's such an opportunity for blessing, finally. Right. He's got our attention. Um, in my case, um, when you're in a period of, of turmoil, uh, what you're doing is battling to find ways out. It's not just a faith walk, but it's, it's also, you're called to do things. And I, I think that in my case, it, it, it was never clear to me during the period where I was in a giant struggle, court cases, uh, uh, everybody's mad at you. There's just enormous pressure coming in on you. It's almost like a war, and you don't know exactly what to do. But that's where faith comes in. Because even though I was in a very bad place, uh, I had prayed to God. Um, as Jonah had prayed to God when he was cast over the side of a boat, God had a mission for him. 
and that works out in the end for him and, and I believe that I have a mission and I don't know exactly what the end result is and I'm not asking that question I'm just faithful to the mission. You have come <laughs> a long way from bottoming out as a biblically illiterate man who did not know God to someone who is taking us through the entire year with a rich daily devotional.